Hello, welcome to my little corner on YouTube. My name is Ida. My channel is Knitting on My Mind. Uh, I am a Swedish knitting expat living in Vienna since 18 years with my family. We moved here with small, three small kids. Uh, now they are grown ups um, and partly living in Sweden and partly living here in Vienna. At the moment, everybody is here because our daughter is here on vacation and our two sons are living with us for the, at the moment uh, because they're working here in Vienna. <clears throat> I work as a kindergarten teacher at the Swedish School of Vienna and I have kids in the, uh, from the age of three to six and I really enjoy my job. Um, thank you for so many uh, of you that have um, hit the subscribes, subscriber button and it has made me really happy. I almost have a hundred subscribers now. I'm really happy about this. And also some of you have left um, some um, messages uh, underneath and that also makes me very happy. I'm so happy to be part of this knitting community on YouTube, uh, talking to some of you and almost feel like I'm, I'm friends with you now. Um, so if you like it, what you see, I will be really happy if you hit the subscribes button or leave me a message and tell me who you are because I really enjoy talking to you and I, I try to answer uh, all your messages as soon as I see them. Uh, to the, uh, the viewers that are coming back, you have probably um, seen that I haven't been here for a long time, for two months, and uh, that is because I was really sick in a pneumonia uh, two months ago, and I had a very long recovery, and then I only worked for one week before my vacation started. As I am a teacher, I have off almost two months every summer and uh, the 1st of July our vac my vacation started and we uh, went straight to Italy uh, on su the Sunday after, uh, after I got off work and spent a week with my family and with my with the family of my my uh, brother-in-law and his family. It was a fantastic uh, vacation as ever. We always spend the 1st July week in Italy and I will try to, at the end of my video, I will try to post some um, pictures from there or maybe a little film. Then I went to a friend's house in Corinthia, uh, which is in the south part of Austria, where I stayed a couple of days with her and enjoyed the fantastic Wörthersee, uh, which is one of the beautiful uh, lakes here in uh, Austria. Uh, I think it is underestimated, is that what you say? Anyway, I don't think so many people know how beautiful uh, Austria is and how, how how fantastic also to vacation, a vacation country it is. But Wörthersee I can really recommend. The largest town there is Klagenfurt, if you want to Google it and, and see what it looks like. Then uh, me, my husband, my old son my, and myself went for five days to Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia. My husband also works there part-time. So we, we just came with him and we traveled from, from Vienna to, to Sarajevo, which takes about 12 hours. It was a very long trip. <clears throat> but uh, Sarajevo was a fantastic city to, to, um, to visit. It's a city of coexistence of many religions and many different kind of people. Even though it's a very small country, Bosnia is a small country, I don't know on the top of my head now how many inhabitants. And also Sarajevo is a small um, capital. Uh, they really manage to live in it. Maybe, maybe that's why. Uh, they have had a lot of um, different um, powers uh, that have been managing them 
for some time it was the Turks, sometime they had the Habsburgs, the Austrian Emperor, then they had a king, then they had Tito after the Second World War, and since 1995 it's an independent country, and I'm not going to tell you exactly how it works, but it is different regions, and I know it is very complicated and they are struggling for the democracy, but I thought it was so fantastic to see all these different kind of cultures and religions and way of living coming together in one pot. And it seemed, at least on the surface, that they were doing well. They're very poor, uh, so that was sometimes a little bit sad to see. But um, they're struggling to get their country together and start living um, a good life there. I can only recommend to go there, to see it for yourselves. Before these travels, I also went to Finland for my brother's 50th birthday. So I have been uh, on the go for a lot and it has been extremely hot here and humid and I haven't really had the power or the energy or the time to um, make a video. But now I'm coming to you. We'll see how long it will be. I was thinking of oh, making it short this time. We'll see how much time, how much time it will take. But I'm happy to see you. Welcome. Let's get on to get down to the knitting. I will today uh, show you a couple of finished objects that I have made in this time. My whips, my ayufu uh, that I am going to finish. I have decided now in the next few weeks. Then I'm going to tell you I'm going to Sweden on Saturday. Um, oh, I forgot to say what day it is. It is the 30th of... I think it is the... No, the 31st actually of, of July today. It's the last day of July and on, on Saturday the 3rd I'm going to Sweden. And on um, uh, next week I'm going to take a part in a knitting course. I'm going to tell you more about that later. Then I will tell you a little bit about a couple of things that I have gotten in the meantime that I haven't seen you. And yeah, that's it. And then I'm going to put at the end, I will put some videos uh, about my travels, from my travels, if you're interested. Let's get down to business. Finished objects. Well, I told you I went to Finland to see my um, little brother who celebrated, my little brother, he's almost two meters tall, uh, to celebrate uh, his 50th birthday. It was family and friends, <clears throat> of course, and for him, I um, I knitted a, a sweater, and uh, of course, I, I have given it to him, so I don't have it here to show you, but I will show you a picture, what it looked like. So this is the sweater. It's dark blue, and it's really, it's a little bit hard to, uh, because it mirror, it's mirroring. Here. Let's see if I take this away, if it's better. No, not really. Well, it's dark blue and white, and a little bit of black and, and light blue. And um, it's made out of Sandnes uh, Fritidsgarn. And uh, I have the, the pattern out of this um, wool. Uh, book that I bought also in, in Norway when we were there <coughs> for a day in um, at Easter and this is actually the model the design that I have used um, but I have taken away the the rib collar up here and just made a regular collar I don't think he would have enjoyed this it was I was very happy to see how how glad he was uh, when he when he received it. It is knitted on with Fritz's Garden, which is 100% Norwegian wool. And um, I used um, knitting needles five and five and a half millimeters. And I think this was the fastest the fastest knit I have done in the last few few years. I decided for Easter, oh, I have to knit a sweater for my brother. And I think I talked Maybe I talked to you about it in one of my previous podcasts. I don't rem remember on my blogs. Um, and I started knitting it for Easter, which was in April. 
and he got it at the 1st of June, so about a month. It took me about a month to knit it. Of course I had to be pretty monogamous when I was knitting that because otherwise I wouldn't have fixed it. Uh, so that was one of my finished objects and then, even though I haven't woven in the ends, uh, I have made two pairs of little baby pants. The, this is size six months. And then we have, uh, and the the ones the six months ones are for a colleague of mine who is having a baby in September. And then we have these guys. They are zero to three months, even though I feel they look very large. And I really like this pattern because <clears throat> when the baby grows, you can pull down the rib and you can use it for a little bit longer. And you can even, if the baby is very small when it's born, you can even make it smaller by, <laughs> by folding the ribs on the bottom and on the top. <clears throat> I'm going to talk more about the yarn for this later because, because I'm also making a little uh, jacket for this baby and I'm going to tell you all about the pattern later in my video. This one is just made out of different um, uh, leftovers. It's actually different different yarns and you can feel it. This is Merino 150 from Lang and this I think is Tusen Fruits. Anyway, it, I don't have the, I don't know exactly, I found it in my my leftovers so I think it's gonna be great well that was everything that I have finished and since I saw you last but I've been working on a couple of, of other things and I will start showing that to you now first out is my circus shawl <clears throat> but first I have to say cheers of course Sissy you want to know what, which mug I'm, I'm drinking out of this is a mug that I bought in the United States in the 1980s and I have kept it because I just <laughs> think it's so cute um, and it always when I use it it reminds me of on my happy time as an exchange student in New Jersey at the butler's house. So cheers. Today I'm drinking black tea. I think it's the one that's called Angel's Tea actually from Enco in Stockholm. <laughs> so and now I'm going to show you my Circus shawl. Um, I think I have seen this in in a magazine, or or if it was on Ravelry. I will link to it uh, down below. This is what the pattern looks like. It's called uh, the circus shawl, shawl and circus. And it is by Anna Bauer, and uh, it's from 2017. Here you have another picture of her finished shawl. And um, you need um, a wool yarn, two threaded. I don't know what you're saying in, um, in English for that. It's uh, 100 grams each color. Uh, or if you want to make a larger shawl, shawl you can you can use more. <coughs> and it says, excuse me, it says uh, a bit of um, you know how you can buy balls on a on a band like this, and that's what you're supposed to use for for these little. Can you see them? Now? Maybe you see them better in this picture. Actually. The little balls. But I'm planning on making my own little pom-poms to put there and I decided to use 
fin organ also from now this is from Rauma. Rauma fin organ in two different colors that I bought last year when I was at um, at the knitting camp in Sweden. It's called fin organ Rauma and it is from Rauma Ulfa Varfabrik. It is let me see. 175 meters on 50 grams and it says uh, three millimeter size needles and I think that's what I'm now I'm using 3.5 I think <clears throat> and it's really hard because now it's so large so it's hard to show you what it looks like uh, but maybe you can get an idea I started up here, it's a really easy pattern, and then I knitted, then you knit, you, uh, you increase here and here, and on the end you, you always knit, um, um, no, you purl at the edge. And this is one increase, then you have one increase here, and, um, and um, one stitch in the middle and one more increase and then you have the same thing on the other side so you start up here with only i think five <clears throat> and as i had pretty much of this yarn and i i didn't really know i bought it for some other project that, that i never made i decided because i want a large shawl shawl that i can um use in the winter when i sit and knit <laughs> in my uh, so I decided to just, I had a little bit more, one ball more of uh, green, so I decided <coughs> to to make it solid up here, and then I'm making the stripes down here, and when I go to Sweden next week, I am going to buy out of the same um, quality, I'm going to buy, um, I think red, as a matter of fact, red, and then there will be... Um, this lime green or whatever you call it, uh, colored pom poms. The color numbers are for the blue, four three seven, and for the green it is four five four. Did you see? Tag. Fin Ulgon. I love this yarn. It's real. Norwegian bowl. <laughs> Nothing added. So I am going to make the last, I am on the last blue um, stripe and I'm going to make another green stripe and then uh, I'm ready to start the, the little flags. On the bottom which are going to be in red and this whole beauty lives in my self-made elephant bag with a Swedish band on it woman band okay that was that and then we have, um, which one am I going to take first? Oh, I think I'm going to take the baby jacket. The baby jacket that goes with the little pants. You know, I'm finished these little pants. And they are out of this fantastic book that you have seen a, a few times, I think, now. But this time I have been knitting these little jackets. This one I have made for, uh, for a baby before. But now I wanted the stripe, so I was thinking, mm, maybe um, I can do something if I, if I only do the knitting on the top and then I will do the stripes below. And so this is how I modified the pattern. I started out here with the um, and this time I made this little braid here for the raglan. And when I came to dividing for the arms and the body, I just started uh, knitting, oh, what do you call that? Stockinette, I think. 
and I have only put in three holes here so we'll only have three buttons and I also made a very long rib on this one because I think then you can also adjust the length the rib is not in the pattern but I modified it with the pattern I also made a rib here because I saw when I st when I finished without a rib it started curling up I didn't want that so I have to finish this in the ne next couple of days because I'm gonna gift it on Saturday to the parents to be <coughs> together with the little pants. And I am knitting this out of also Lang Marine 150. Uh, this is the gray. Then I have the color. I have actually two different colors. I don't have so much. These are the different colors. And let's you see they are. Hmm, I don't know what to say. They, they change colors as you go. So it's Lang Merino 150. It's a very nice yarn for baby knits. Let's put that in. Mm. And the book, uh, baby knitting on um, on um, needles number three is by Liana Holmer Samsa, and uh, I just realized uh, that I that you can, of course you can. Everybody is on Instagram, but I just found her on Instagram, and she has a really nice page there. Go in and check her out. I I will put her Instagram name on the bottom or down here, just for you to see. And then I started a sweater for myself out of Eva's book, Sticka Flätor by Eva Asplund. And it's called Skenet Bedrar. I can't, I can't translate that. And in white, let's see if, I, if you see it. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, let's see if I can. Give you a close up on the pattern right here. It's a braid pattern. It's it's not very complicated. And um, I am knitting it on knitting needles three and four millimeters. And I have chosen a yarn from Cascade Yarns, Cascade 220, uh, that I bought at Litet Nystern in Stockholm, Heathers, made in Peru, and if I don't, yeah, it's Peruvian Highland wool, and the color number is 9322, it's hand wash only, I just saw that. <laughs> And this is how far I've come on the back. I don't know. Looks really big, but hmm, I think it's going to be okay. It doesn't really matter if it's oversized because it's the kind of sweater. You start out with the with the little um, braids here and only um, knit here, and then. It goes on little squares of of stock in it and some knitting in between. It, it's a really nice, comfortable pattern. This I'm taking with me to Sweden. I have to cake up my yarn though. Isn't this color just beautiful? Squish, squish. I'm gonna put Eva's Instagram name also on the bottom here so you can go and check him out he he's a fantastic knitter and designer yeah that was the works in progress that i have and now i'm going to show you an ufo that i have um gotten out of my my stash because i have so much 
time off in the summer I always clean out different rooms of, of my of my house and this year I decided to um, write down my whole stash what I have and also uh, to write down all the UFOs and also um, projects that I want to do and I ended up with 16 UFOs unfinished projects they are they are things that are in progress but they're also things that are just kind of laying around and one of these that I have thinking of do finishing for a very long time uh, I'm going to show you now I'm going to take it to Sweden it's a pair of socks and I only have a pair of socks I have the sweater and I have the baby knits with me and my yeah I have four things with me and I hope that I'm going to finish the second sock it's Sophia Camerborn's Longing for Gotland. I have finished one sock, I think a year ago, maybe. I love this. I love those colors. Oh, the green is not really coming out the way it should. But that's what it looks like. And the roses, the Gotland roses. <coughs> and it's by Sophia Camerborn. Uh, of Camerbornia and I'm knitting it out of um, different sock yarns from my stash these are from Lang Super Socks Whoops, I have showed you this before and I have been thinking of starting it for a very long time this is this is color 900-0061 and this is color 900 zero, zero, 18 and this is actually my favorite yarn in this <laughs> combination it's from Mylon White from Lana Grossa Mylon White Merino and the color number is 2270 it is not as mm, doesn't really come out it's like a lime green and it much it's much more colorful in real life but I hope to finish this UFO when I am in Sweden I will tell you about it next time <laughs> that's it and this I'm keeping in my bag from Mockery 14 in uh, Stockholm in the old town. Oh, I forgot to tell you what bags the other things were in, but they were my own bags. You have seen them before if you are a um, reviewer that is coming back. But this one I bought in Makeri Fjorton. This one where, where I have the baby knits is my own self-made ones. And a sweater for myself. Okay, so that was my UFOs. Um, then I wanted to tell you a little bit about another project, or project, it's just a test project, kind of. I organized a, a knitting weekend for my knitting friends um, right before I got pneumonia. I actually started getting a cold. This was uh, at the end of May. And we went away to Ispital. It's uh, in Lower Austria, not very far from Vienna, about an hour drive. And we were 10 ladies uh, approximately. Um, and we stayed at a very nice um, organic, uh, hotel, organic hotel, a hotel with organic food. Uh, and in, it's in a, a very nice area. <coughs> and uh, um, one of my friends there, Karin, she wanted to <coughs> start a raglan sweater. So she said, oh, Ida, you how do I how do I knit raglan? And you you knit so much, can't you show me raglan? And I was thinking, did I ever do a proper raglan? I probably did those little baby sweaters are raglan. But, <coughs> you know, it's one thing to do, uh, do things after a pattern. And there is one thing to show somebody. So 
I got out from my stash, from my leftover stash, Fleet is Gone, which is a really the one that I made the sweater for my brother out of from San Sunnies. Because I thought to show somebody, then you need to have a thick yarn. And um, I made this to show her how to make a raglan sweater. And I, I saved it because I think it's a very good thing to... It, you can see really well how it works. Maybe I'll finish it and give it to some doll or something. I don't know. Because it's, I think... Oh, maybe a baby could have it too. The color is not too small. And then we were talking about um, knitting with multiple colors. So... I showed her a little bit of that too. I don't remember. No, I didn't do any short rows on this one. So this will just live in this little little bag with a deer on them that I made a few years ago. I love this material. It's so cute. And um, yeah. If somebody comes and asks me, I can show them. I also I also have a knitting group at the Swedish church once a month, and there sometimes people ask for advice how to to master different problems, and then it's nice to have an example. So that's gonna stay in here. <clears throat> oh, I forgot one of my UFOs, which is not knitting actually. Do you remember this? This is um, embroidery. It's out of a book um, by Helena Eriksson from Brodera Mera in Sweden. The book looks like this. And it's a fantastic book uh, with different uh, embroidery patterns. And um, I get so inspired, I want to embroider a lot and I never get to it. <laughs> but when I was in Sweden in, in the spring, I bought um, a kit of this um, Christmas and... Oh no, I shouldn't show you the pattern. That's not okay. But I can show you a picture of the walnut. It's a Christmas um, hanging, wall hanging. And it shows Lucia, which we celebrate uh, on the 13th of December. It shows the peppercorker that we eat, the cannas that we lit, and then <clears throat> it also shows the little Tom Denise who are dancing around the tree. So I have started. <laughs> this is going to take a lot of time, but I have started. Ta da! I started the light in the middle because I, I spoke to uh, Helena on. <clears throat> I wrote her a mail to ask, where do I start? It's a big thing. And you know, if I start in the right, wrong place, then I won't have enough material on this side. So she said to me to start in the middle, and this is the middle stitch. It's not going to be finished for this Christmas, but we, we will probably not be home for Christmas anyway, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I started, because then I have some place to go on from. <sighs> well, that was all my projects. I, I need to have a little, whew, it's so hot here. We have approximately between 30 and 35 <coughs> degrees every day, every day inside. And then these guys come in handy. I wonder what they are in English. A fan, it's a fan. Uh, now I wanted to tell you about um, the, the workshop I'm going to go to next week. I'm traveling to Sweden on Saturday and on Monday uh, I go to Biskops Arne. Well, actually I go on Sunday evening. Biskops Arne, which is north of Stockholm. And there I'm going to attend um, a course, a workshop called Svenska Sticka Svenska Traditioner, I think. So it's all about um, how 
our Swedish traditions. Different in different parts of Sweden, we have different knitting traditions. So we we're going to talk about the different districts or regions and how what, what patterns they use and maybe also what yarn they use and what techniques they use and um, yeah it's going to be really interesting and this workshop is um, held by Karin Kahnlund which is a very well-known knitter in Sweden she is a master of knitting uh, <clears throat> and um, she uh, is called Uppstickaren on Instagram and she also has a company called Uppstickaren and she, she ha holds a lot of um, um, workshops and courses in Sweden. Last year I, I learned twine knitting from her. And she told us to bring uh, wool in different colors and so I decided to get out some of my wool different scraps of wool that I'm keeping in my bag here um, made out of an old curtain of my mother-in-law she had them in, a, in her bedroom isn't that my shoe? fantastic so that's what I'm bringing and I'm also thinking of bringing um, uh, from Jameson and Smith a kit of co colors that I bought some years ago for a hat I'm not sure though if I'm gonna bring that because I know she also has yarn there so if I really need more than I have in my bag I will not need the Jameson Smith wool. I will talk all about that in the next episode. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't really know what's gonna happen so, so, so I can't really talk a lot about it but I will tell you about it when I get home again. Yes, and as a little round up, I will show you some things that I have received and I bought. Um, first of all, I received from Sweden. I have a, um, no, it's not called prescription. When you, when you get it every time you buy, you, you pay and then you get it every time it gets a new issue. Anyway, the magazine I am, um, um I was ordering uh, is Sticket au Sant. And you have seen Sticket au Sant here in, on the, my channel before. Uh, because I have a couple of issues already, the first two. And this is the third one, the number two of 2019. And um, <clears throat> the editor is the very nice Johanna Lendin. She's a fantastic knitter. And in this issue i want to show you when i get to sweden if i found it find this yarn that's what i'm gonna buy because i just love these summer socks i feel they look like rhubarb they are actually called rhubarb sock um i think the yarn is from Jarbo. i should actually be able to get it See, yeah it's bamburagi 50% wool and 25% polyamide and 25% bamboo. Mm. 400 meters from Jarbo. I'm going to try to get that. I think I can get that in a wool store in Sweden. <clears throat> and then I just wanted to show you this out of mohair. I really like that. I remember in the 80s we used to knit things out of mohair. I actually have a picture of myself here. Let's see if that works. In a mohair sweater. Can you see that? Yeah. I should just keep her head. It's a dark blue mohair sweater. No, it's a sweater, it's a jacket actually. And it's from 1988 or 87. And I thought it was so fun that this is getting into to be um, To be in again. This magazine is so nice because she also covers people not only it's not only knitting it's also embroidery and this lady is called Conan Holm Bay and she does new things out of old traditional knitting patterns. See she knitted these old Dalla Floda flowers 
onto her college jacket. It has a, a pillow, for example. <clears throat> she also knitted um, an illustration for uh, postmarks, Swedish postmarks. Postmarks? I don't know. You know what you put on the on the letter when you send them. Send them. And then she also uh, embroidered um, covers of some Swedish classical books about the people emigrating from Sweden to the US. The books are by uh, Wilhelm Oben. Yeah, that I wanted to show you in this stick at the sound. I, uh, I'm so irritated, I don't get it. It's called prenumerera in Swedish. You know, you pay something and then you get every issue sent to you. At least, anyway, I get it sent to my daughter in Sweden because I can't get it sent here. So she sent it to me when I had pneumonia. So it was a good thing. <coughs> and then I have a few, three acquisitions that I made. I, in my local yarn shop, I found this natural fit leather thimble from Clover and it's a little thimble out of leather and I really enjoy it. I haven't even used it yet but I think I'm gonna enjoy it when I embroider. Isn't that cute? I need to put that in my notions bag and then this I haven't gotten out of the bag either yet. It's a mini pom-pom maker from Prim. And this is what I'm gonna use when I make the pom-poms for my, my shawl, my circus shawl. <clears throat> I hope they're not gonna be too big. I do not know how it works, so I'll tell you that when I know. And then I have found out I think I look I think it was on Fruity Knitting they had a they covered John Arvin textiles and um, uh, I think there was some one other podcast that I watched something with green I have to look that up and they were talking about John Arvin textiles and their new their first magazine called the annual as I have decided not to buy too much wool this year, I didn't order any wool from this company, but the wool just looks fabulous. But I ordered this magazine to look into it. And I want to show you, first of all, this is John, who was interviewed in, on Fruity Knitting. Such a positive man and uh, yeah, I. I I just got really ho happy when I, I heard him talking about his his mill. <clears throat> and then there is a, I don't know if I should show this, but there is, um, oh, I could probably show this picture of the mill. And there you're supposed to find the different hiding places of the cat. And the illustration is made by, I have to check this out. Maybe I'll put it down. I, I'll put it on the, on the show notes because she also has, that is the um, podcast where I found out about this company. Look at the colors of the yarn. Fantastic. And we have these Chapman socks. And I'm really interested in making. Oh, you can't really see the pattern now. There you can see them. I think I'm gonna try this pattern on a pair of socks of mine. And also this lovely, lovely shawl, so wraps, what do you call them? by Francesca Hughes. Here you can see the pattern a little bit better. So 
so the annual you can order it online and it came in this <laughs> very well sealed um, envelope and you can even visit the mill and the next possibility is on the 6th and 7th of June 2020 They also send a little note. And um, also you can become a mill member. I'm considering that because I really like to, to help people with these kind of companies. So the annual, I can only recommend this. Well, that was a little bit something from my corner of the YouTube. Uh, now I will add, I will edit this and I will add a couple of videos from our trips. And um, I made it under an hour. I was thinking half an hour, but it's 45 minutes already. Um, I'm so glad that you tuned in and watched the video. And if you leave a comment, I will be really happy. I will try to <clears throat> get back to you on my channel here in about three or four weeks. I know it's not going to be in the regular two weeks that I tried to before I got sick because I'm going to be in Sweden and then we start working and we'll see. But within one month I will be back. And if you like it, and uh, please give me a thumbs up and maybe a little comment. Have a good time until then. Happy knitting. I'll see you soon again. Bye from Vienna.